If you're looking to buy a star tracker for the first time, you have a lot of options and it can be pretty overwhelming to decide which one is going to work best for your own needs. So in this video, I'm going to break down the four major star trackers and we're going to look at some of the pros and cons of each one to hopefully help you decide uh, which tracker is going to work best. Now, as a side note, I have a full written up description of everything we're talking about today over my website and I go into a lot more detail. So if you'd prefer to read rather than watch the video, uh, you can head right over here. I should have a little pop up and uh, that'll take you right to my website where you can read everything we're going to talk about. So with that out of the way, first, why don't we talk about my personal recommendation, which is the Skyguider Pro here. This is the tracker I personally use, and uh, I really haven't had too many problems with it. To be clear, the Star Tracker itself is actually just this piece here. It's very uh, small, portable, all metal, well, mostly metal. Uh, there's some plastic here. But uh, overall, I really like the design and the build quality of the Skyguider Pro. It's probably one of the better designs out there. On the top, we have all of our uh, buttons. On the back, we have our inputs. We've got our polar scope built into the Star Tracker itself, which is actually kind of nice. And then on the front here, we have our camera mount. So this is where we're going to attach our camera and our ball head and all that. And this features a clutch mechanism, this little piece here. So that just gives you a more secure connection rather than just some screws, which some of the other trackers have. Uh, so that's just a quick look at the Star Tracker itself. Now, one thing I really like about the Skyguider Pro is that when you buy the bundle for like $420 roughly, it comes with everything you need. So you get the Star Tracker, you get the base here, you also get the declination bracket and the counterweight kit. So you don't have to go out and buy anything extra. You get everything in one package. And that's the only Star Tracker on the market that actually comes with everything you need by default. So while I really love the Skyguider, there are a few little problems I have. The first is actually the base here. Uh, the base works, it does its job, however it could be a little bit better and I've seen quite a few people that have problems with adjusting the latitude. So if you're going above 40 degrees, so that would mean if you're like above 40 degrees north or south, um, you might have some problems using the base. Also I actually had this big knob here on the back break off of my tracker recently. Um, I have two of these bases because I have the Sky Tracker Pro as well which we'll talk about. But um, this is one small problem with the Skyguider Pro that I do have. It'll work for most people, but if you are having trouble, uh, we'll talk about an alternative you can get later on in the video. Uh, the only other problem I have is the declination bracket. It does a great job. It's free. It's included in the package. However, uh, the way I have mine configured is so I have more leverage with my counterweight. So basically these declination brackets are designed to allow you to use bigger cameras and lenses or even a small telescope with these relatively small portable trackers. Uh, the design though on the declination bracket could be a little bit better. I have a problem where when I'm rotating my big telephoto lens around, uh, one of the screws will always hit the screw on the back and uh, it's just a nightmare to deal with at night. Realistically, it's just a small inconvenience, but uh, hopefully in a future revision, uh, when I off turn releases a new tracker at some point, they'll have that figured out uh, because as we'll talk about with the Star Adventure later on in the video, that one is a much better designed uh, counterweight kit whole system. So overall, uh, the Skyguider Pro is an excellent option for most people and I have no reservations recommending it to pretty much everybody. It's a great tracker and uh, that's the Skyguider Pro. Next we're going to talk about the Sky Tracker Pro which is kind of the entry level option from my Optron. The Sky Tracker Pro is another great option for my Optron. This is more their entry level star tracker. So it's got an all plastic body here and it's not exactly weather sealed. You know, if I look in here, I can even see the circuit boards and the gears and all that. So the build quality could be a little bit better on here. Um, the polar scope will sit here on the side. Well, on the back, you have all your buttons again that you'll need. And the front here, this is our camera mounting block. So this is where you'll attach your ball head and then maybe even your optional counterweight kit if you decide to get that. Um, but you can see there's no clutch here. It's just these two screws that hold everything down uh, when you're tracking. Overall, this is actually the tracker I started off with and it does a good job, but the biggest problem I have with it is that it has a very low weight capacity. So according to the iOptron's own manuals, it has a 2.6 pound weight limit. So if you have anything over 2.6 pounds, they recommend using the counterweight kit. With that said, I've used probably five pounds of camera gear on here, my Nikon D750, my ball head and my Nikon 14 to 24, that's at least four pounds. And uh, I didn't have any serious issues. I was still able to shoot four minutes long at least. Uh, but it's still recommended to get the counterweight kit. However, I personally don't like the counterweight kit at all. I think it's a terrible design. Um, I've had a lot of problems with it. 
I've learned how to make it work, and it's something I cover in my Star Trek tutorial series. So if you do have it, I'm going to show you how to actually make it work properly. But it just could be a lot better. So in my experience, if you're going to be using a big camera and a big lens, or if you want to use any kind of telephoto lens, I would recommend going with the Skyguider Pro instead. It's much better build quality, and it can handle a heavier setup. This one, this is a good tracker if you've just got a small entry-level camera or a mirrorless camera. This will work just fine. But for everybody else, if you've got a full-frame camera, if you want to use a telephoto lens, I would definitely go with the Skyguider Pro instead. Next up, we have the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, which is by far the largest star tracker on the market, but it is comparable to the Skyguider Pro that we first looked at. They both have an 11 pound weight limit, so you can add quite a bit of camera gear on here and still get great results. Now, one problem I do have with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer is that it's by far the largest tracker, so it's gonna be hard to fit in your bag. It's also quite heavy, and uh, for those reasons alone, it's just kind of a pain to take anywhere. Whereas the Skyguider Pro is very small, relatively lightweight, and I don't have any problems putting it in my backpack to go out if I'm gonna do a hike at night. So one of the great things though about the Star Adventure is the declination bracket and the whole counterweight system. I really like how well designed this is. You can just move the whole thing up or down to get more leverage. And when you attach a telephoto lens directly or a telescope directly to the declination bracket, it's just a breeze to use, especially compared to the Skyguider Pro where I mentioned it was kind of a pain to use. So that's one area where the Star Adventure really shines is the declination bracket. So if you're gonna be using a big telephoto lens, you might wanna actually get the Star Adventure instead just because it's just a lot easier to use uh, with big camera setups. Now some of the problems I have with the Star Adventure are the flimsy plastic covers, which if you've seen any other video here on YouTube, they all mention it, but I just thought I'd say it too. You know, the, the battery cover especially, a lot of times I'd reach out to pull the Star Adventure out and the battery cover would slide off and I'd almost drop the tracker. And it's just kind of a shame, you know, you buy a really nice tracker and it's just got this flimsy little plastic cover on there. Also the polar scope cover is just cheap flimsy plastic as well. Another problem I had is the rotary dial that controls your tracking speed. I often found that it would accidentally turn itself on. You know, if I put it in my bag, sometimes I would turn it on on accident or in my case. So it's kind of a shame that the tracker is able to turn itself on on accident very easily in my experience. And since it runs on AA or I think AAA batteries, either one, uh, you can drain all your batteries without even realizing it. So that's something else you want to watch out for. Overall though, the Star Adventure is a great option. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though are the different bundles. And this is one area where it gets kind of confusing. I believe there's a $310 option and a $320 option. The $310, you just get the ball head mounting adapter. So this is where you just attach a ball head in your camera. That's gonna work fine if you're just shooting wide angle. But if you wanna do any kind of telephoto work, you'll probably wanna get the declination bracket. Again, that should be about $320. And I'll just save you some cash. But the problem I have with the Skywatcher models is you have to buy all the other accessories as well. So it doesn't come with the base. You'll need to get a base. That costs about $65. And remember when I mentioned in the earlier part of the video about the Ioptron bases being kind of flimsy? This is the base I'd recommend you get if you're having any kind of problems. It's a great base, but again, it does cost $65. And you'll pretty much need it to do a precise polar alignment at night. Uh, to be clear, you can attach any of the trackers we're talking about today directly to a ball head if you've got an Arca Swiss plate, but you're going to almost always want to use the bases just to have a more accurate polar alignment. So all things considered, when you're buying the Star Adventure, you're going to pay about $320. You'll have to spend another $65 for the latitude base and another $30 at least for the counterweight. So it costs about the same as the Skyguider Pro pretty much the same specs, but overall the design on the Star Adventure isn't as good with the exception of the declination brackets. So this is really where I think a lot of people are gonna be between the two is a Skyguider, Star Adventure. If you're gonna be using a telephoto lens almost exclusively or a lot of the time, I'd probably go with the Star Adventure. If you're gonna be doing a lot of wide angle stuff and occasionally some deep space astrophotography, the Skyguider Pro is definitely gonna be your better option. Lastly, we have the Skywatcher Star Adventure Mini, also known as the SAM. And this is the only Star Tracker with smartphone capabilities, which sounds great, but unfortunately, this is where I had the most problems of any tracker. Now, unlike every other Star Tracker on the market that has buttons on the back to control the tracking speed, and pretty much all you have to do is turn on the tracker, it'll start tracking. With the Mini, you have to connect to your smartphone, you have to connect to the app, you have to use the app to set the tracking speed. And unless you do all that, the tracker is just useless, it's a paperweight. So. 
it's kind of a shame that you can't even use the tracker unless you have the smartphone connected and you're using the app. And in my experience, I tested out two separate units. The first unit, I had a lot of problems with connectivity where I'd be out on location, it would randomly stop connecting to my phone, or it would just stop tracking in the middle of an exposure, or I couldn't even connect to the mini. Uh, it was just kind of a nightmare. And then I used a second unit, I didn't have any trouble at all. So, uh, you know, if you're getting into this, I would probably avoid the mini for now just because you never know what's gonna happen with your smartphone or maybe you left your smartphone at home or the battery dies on your phone. Anything could happen and then you're out. You're not even gonna be able to shoot. You know, you can drive six hours to an amazing location. You have smartphone connectivity problems, you're out of luck. Any other star tracker, it's gonna work no matter what, unless you run out of battery. Uh, so for that reason alone, I find the mini kind of hard to recommend to most people. Now, realistically, most of you aren't gonna have a problem connecting to the mini. I just want you to be aware that the mini was completely dependent on your smartphone. And you will need the SAM console app, which is a free download on Android and iPhone. And this will control all of the functions on the mini. And you can even connect your camera to the mini using a snap cable and control your camera's shutter speed as well as the interval. So that's a nice bonus feature as well. Now in the app, you can control different time-lapse features, uh, your tracking speed, and a whole lot more. The only problem is it's pretty complicated, especially if you're doing a time-lapse. There's things like swing range and all this other stuff that don't really make a lot of sense. So that's why I went through and created a full video series specifically on how to use the app because there's a lot there. Uh, so if you want to learn more, you can always check out my full tutorial series on the mini uh, because there is a lot to learn just from the app. But I'm hoping in the future that either iOptron or Skywatcher will release another star tracker that has smartphone capabilities but isn't dependent on them. And I think that would be the best of both worlds. But eh, who knows, it might be another few years before we see anything like that. One last thing before I forget, uh, the Mini takes all the same accessories as the normal Star Adventure. So it'll be the same base, same declination bracket, same counterweight, uh, which is kind of nice, you know, if you end up going from one or the other, you'll have all the same components. So keep that in mind as well. All right, well, that's about all I have for you today. So for most people, I think the Skyguider Pro is going to be the safest bet. You get everything you need in one bundle. Uh, it's going to work great for wide angle, telephoto, heavy setups, light setups. It can handle everything. It's got a small, compact design. And I've been using mine, and I haven't really had any serious troubles with it. Uh, with that said, the Star Adventure is another great option if you're going to be using a telephoto lens or a small telescope most of the time, just because a declination bracket has a better design, and it's just going to make things easier for you, I think, uh, compared to the Sky Guider. So that would be another option. Finally, if you've got a lightweight camera setup, I would say anything, maybe four pounds or less, so mirrorless cameras, things like that. The Sky Tracker Pro or the SAM are both going to work great. Remember though, with the same, you are gonna be completely relying on that smartphone app, which might turn some of you off from going with the mini. Uh, but regardless which tracker you get, I've got a full length tutorial series for each one. So you can head over to my website and check those out. They each have over 10 hours of content and I'm gonna show you how to do everything. So if you have any questions at all, that'd be the first place I'd go to check that out. And like I said at the start of the video, if you wanna read even more about what we've talked about, I've got a full length blog post over on my website. So you can head over there check that out as well. Regardless which tracker you decide to go with, I hope this video helped you guys out. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in a future video.